Okay, we made this video just for our benefit, you know, for the YouTube, for the student to read it, and you, for anybody interested. So, so this is the, uh, again, I repeated that this, uh, we, we follow the Arfkin, but the old versions, so the difference is that we will start from the chapter three. So, uh, I want to tell you first the history about the, the mathematical methods of physics, because uh, there is an Armenian, 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 you know where is Armenia? So, there is an Armenian uh, folklore or the joke, they say that if somebody read the topic and uh, was not aware about the history of that, it looks like uh, a person who lived whole life in the cave. So we need to know that when the mathematical physics started and uh, when actually and which problem we, we are going to solve. So I needed to say that this is the mathematical physics. So uh, mathematical physics is a like a snake fish, actually. So this is not the fish and this is not the snake, actually. <laughs> so the, some, some physicists, they don't like the mathematical physics, even the title, because they say that what you are doing is not the physics, and what you are doing is not the mathematics. But they are like the snake fish. So, Mathematical physics is played on the border, so sometimes we use very deep maths, and the, but anyway, we are looking for the physics and the engineering application, because actually this, this course is designed not only for physics, for engineering also. They have a, the course called Advanced Mathematical Method, Advanced Engineering Mathematics, and uh, it's, uh, and it's funny that uh, my first study about the mathematical physics was uh, I started from the advanced engineering mathematics. I didn't start it from the Earthkin. When I was a student in second year, uh, second first semester, I think, I started to read the book because this advanced math engineering mathematics is very interesting. So a lot of application you can find from there, and the, the application which you can find the example in the nature, in the life. So I like the advanced engineering. So and. Uh, so we are looking to describe the phenomena by using the mathematics. So you needed to know that first uh, the area of the physics. So we have a pair, of, and this is the open course, you know. Uh, Sometimes I will change my plan. But there is no any plan for that. Mm -hmm. So I mean. Today maybe I will talk about the history and a little bit about the uh, analy vector analysis and next week maybe I will continue that and maybe I will find the interesting, more interesting topic for you and I will develop that topic. So this is a completely free course. So pre this, pre Einstein actually and uh, after and uh, in this period and uh, when the quantum mechanics started quantum mechanics. So for different uh, different time in physics, we needed different mathematics. So before the, that, the physics was just thermodynamics. So, and the classical mechanics. I will tell you which kind of the mathematics each one used. And there was also electromagnetic, but later, hmm? electro and magnetic. Magnetism, so by Maxwell, and that was uh, all credited to the Newton. So actually, the thermodynamic is based just on the algebra. So you needed you needed just to know that how to work with the simple equation. So thermodynamic is not the field which you can call it as a as a part of the mathematical physics. Classical mechanics. So classical mechanics is the field that. We need, we need the advanced mathematics, like differential equations, differential equations. The first problem, and the only problem in classical mechanics is that we needed to solve the, the Newton law, mm -hmm. where you have the force as a function of the coordinate x, y, and z, uh, the velocity <coughs> and the coordinate vector. displacement vector, call it. displacement vector, and the time. Not, 
not, don't think that this classical mechanics is always easy to handle. Just for very, very easy case, you can solve this equation and find the solution for that. For example, one of the basic examples which inspire you that to go to the mathematical physics is that this simple example of the harmonic oscillator. Hmm? Harmonic oscillator. So, if the, if the spring is very good, so I mean that is the hardness is in a reasonable rate, rate, so it will, it will follow the Hooke's law. The Hooke's law say that the force which this particle will is given just linearly as the, as a displacement, and as the position of the mass is called x. So this is the Hooke's law. So, and if you apply the Newton mechanics, so you get these simple equations. And here you forget about the friction, you forget about everything. You forget even about the external force which the, the particle will be feel. Maybe this particle feel some external force like FT. For example, a physical model, I, I just very quickly talk about the example and go, and the, each example needs a lot of detail actually. For example, this model can be used to model the, the motion of the electric charge, for example, in the between the between the plate of the one capacitance. You have a capacitance, for example, and uh, inside the capacitance you can have the electric field. And if you release the one point charge here, like electron, positron, anything, so you can use this model to make the a model for the dielectric oscillation. This is a this is a very applied physics actually question. Very applied physics question. So hopefully you can solve this equation and you can find the solution for that. So this is the second order differential equation. Order differential equations. And uh, we will spend maybe two chapter, two lecture about the solution of these equations. Maybe this is a good strategy to start from here, to explain you how to solve the differential equation. Anyway, so classical mechanics is related to that. But not always the mathematical physics is easy to handle. I told you, if, if you here just add a friction term, for example, friction term, like bx squared dot, just if you if you if you consider the media like a, a medium which you have a friction friction force you, you have a good feeling about the friction the force which make uh, the tire riding on the road when the car is going so car is moving so I want to tell you just adding a small part to that equation it, this equation becomes answer so no exact solution for that you can find. You see, and you needed to develop a new technique because you definitely want to know that what is the behavior of the system. So when the system will be in the definite position and when the system will have a definite velocity, huh? question like that, or when the system will reach the maximum energy, when the system lost whole energy of the, that. So question like that. We just by adding a small part of that, so the system becomes completely nonlinear, and this nonlinearity push you to use a very advanced mathematical physics methods called perturbation theory. This is the one of the topics which I wanted to talk in the, our first uh, over next uh, coming lecture. Perturbation theory is the is the field of the mathematical physics which uh, rule the central play, play the central rule in many fields. In astrophysics, you needed the perturbation theory. 
in the engineering, okay. mechanical engineering, almost all the system needs to understand the perturbation theory. And even for atmosphere science, huh, for meteorology, for everything you need to use the perturbation. So perturbation theory is one of the topics which I will teach, uh, I will try to explain you in detail. So this is just classical mechanics. You know, I am talking just about the classical mechanics. So still we are in classical mechanics. And even don't think that classical mechanics finished. No. There is a lot of problem in classical mechanics. We never can get solution for that. And some of the questions are, have, uh, have a price to solve. About a million, million dollar price, for example, to solve the negative stokes equations, you know, to find the solution for the equations, uh, negative stokes equations. So even classical mechanics for the fluids uh, is not finished. So we have a lot of activity on this, that. And also there is a, not only perturbation theory, there is a topic which I learned very recently, is that you have a two system and a K has. <laughs> this is the topic. It's very advanced te technique actually. Mm -hmm. Fozi, the Arabic is Fozi. Games. Fozi. I remember that because it was the name of the one TV series. This is us, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, chaos is also a very actively fast and quickly growing subject in mathematical physics and the whole science. The, the problem is that we have a two system and everything for the system are the same. So they started from the same point, but one of them changed the initial condition. I mean. Instead of the starting from here, for example, the other one will start from the somewhere else. And uh, the problem is that the, after long life, long time, the behavior completely change, for example. You expected that you have the same behavior from the two similar system when they start from the uh, initial condition. And if you're changing, same initial, but if you're changing a little bit the initial condition, different from the first one, you will see completely different uh, idea. So that's this very, very new subject just recently proposed, but not very new for the mathematicians, actually. This is related also to classical mechanics. There is nothing about the quantum mechanics here or about something else. What we have a quantum chaos also, but uh, this subject is very new, so not very much interest, uh, not very much studied. So this is all about the classical mechanics. So, it's still in classical mechanics, we have a two subjects to study. I, actually three. One I want to solve, I want to explain you about the differential equations. So, and uh, the whole theory of differential equation, it's uh, very uh, interesting. And this is the first thing which uh, any science student or engineer should learn, the so differential equations, in upper level actually. I will start from lower level, but I will teach you something uh, upper level about the uh, nonlinearity and uh, something like that. So differential equation, perturbation theory, and if I find the time, and if I uh, have an interest, I will talk about the chaos because it's very new. So I need to keep it this. So the, the, the other subject, so you know how, you understood that how I want to present this. I want to present the subject as they appear in the physics. You know, I never will spend the time to explain the mathematics which you use in thermodynamics. I will start from the mathematics which you needed in classical mechanics. And after that, pass to the Maxwell equation. You know, Maxwell equations are magic, actually. So in the vacuum, This is then the vacuum. So Maxwell was the person who showed that if there is a no matter in the space, so if you have a vacuum, electricity, electric, electricity phenomena can make the magnetism. So this is a this is a lens law. You can find it 
a good explanation about that in the fundamental of physics holiday, huh? Induction. I, I, sorry, induction is a French name, but induction, induction, huh? induction. So the second, he proposed another equation. Another, you know, you, you, you never can even, some of you may be not very familiar with the notation I write it. So this is, will be my task. So I will start from here. I will start from the vector analysis. The second equation also give you some type of the derivative of the B and the some type of derivative of D. It shows that if the electric field change by the time, so you will have the magnetic field just by words, simple words. And this equation gives you another type of derivative of the B and zero, zero. And each equation have a, a mean. For example, this equation, and you don't know why, but I just see. This equation implies that, implies that about no existence of the magnetic monopole. Magnetic monopole. monopole. Magnetic monopole is the is the per, is the object where, which we expect that to have a just one pole. You know, uh, the per, if you are from geophysics, you know that better than me. That uh, we have a two pole actually for magnet. You needed n and s. So if you can find the object with one, uh, but you cannot imagine that. You know, this is called a monopole, huh? Monopole. Just n or s, n or s. Actually, in electromagnetism, there is no any reason to think that the monopole exists. But later in quantum mechanics, I will tell you that the Dirac is one of the is one of the person who will be one of the, my main reference, Paul Adrian and Marie Dirac. So he was the physicist, but most of the work were theoretical physics, actually mathematical physics. So he, he, he worked with this equation and the idea of quantum mechanics, and he predicted that the monopole may be existed. So all the information about the magnetic monopole already existed in the paper. Just remain that somebody find it that in the lab or the, in the some place in the world. But you know, this is the power of the theoretical physics and mathematical physics. We predict that what is the monopole. I have all the information about the monopole on the paper. So just let's define it. And the other equation also, but this is just give you there is no source. So this equation is important. So no existence of the monopole. So and the, by combining this equation, and I want to teach you that how to combine this equation, Maxwell showed that so you can have a second order partial differential equation satisfy the both the vector E and the B, and this is called a wave equation. If you if you if you have this equation. If you don't have this equation, so you should not, uh, you are not able now to use the, your mobile antenna, TV, and everything. So all back to this equation, wave equation. Wave equation. And wave equation reduced from, for me as a mathematical physics person, so wave equation is just a, a equation, I call it Helmholtz equation. So, and you need to find the solution for that. And that will be one of my subjects. So one of the, my subjects will be to solve the Helmholtz equation just. But not, it's not very easy because the solution depends to the coordinate of the system which you will use. Sometimes you have a tube like that. I don't know what's the bowling. You have a system like that. Huh? And, uh, the equation for the phenomena here reduced the Helmholtz equation. So you needed to solve this equation. Of course, such systems cannot be solved in the normal coordinate like x and y. So you needed to understand that how to use the, the curve coordinates to reduce the difficulty level of the problem to the softer form. So I will ta spend time to solve the Helmholtz equation. So electromagnetism is based on this equation, and finally you need to find the Helmholtz solution for Helmholtz equation. And that there is a big problem here because this side, as the solution, side can be electric field or magnetic field, anything. It, 
it not only depends to the coordinate by x, y, z, and t, it only also depends to the geometry or the boundary. The geometry, I told you, for example, it could be a geometry of the some uh, electric tube, for example. And, uh, and uh, the behavior of this signal, for example, inside of that, we used to the equation like the Helmholtz equation. But maybe nonlinear equation, maybe something else. But you need to know also the boundary. So uh, boundary means that the shape of the, your system is very important. We never talk about the shape of the system before. So Helmholtz equation will be one of the subjects that I want to solve. So this, the mathematics which I will try to explain you is the minimum level of the mathematics which you needed to start the theoretical physics. So this is the minimum level, actually. So I, I, I was feeling that uh, this mathematics, uh, nobody cared about them, this mathematics. So I just I started the, this lecture because of that. So and after that, we are going to the quantum mechanics. So in quantum mechanics, quantum mechanics, you have a rich mathematical context. We have a representation theory, representation theory, 